Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. VTOL SSTO Breakdown. The video that I put out recently about the VTOL SSTO got a lot of good attention. Lots of views, plenty of comments, it was great. So that told me that while SSTOs are still a very hot topic, VTOL SSTOs are also extremely interesting. So in an effort to make my videos more popular, I'm going to see whether or not I can make more VTOL SSTOs. Because while other videos do get a lot of attention, it was nothing near in comparison to the VTOL SSTO. In the video, I got a lot of requests asking me to show you how to build one. So today in this video, we're going to do a simple breakdown. I'll tell you what kind of mods are very useful and helpful, as well as how to put together the engine and what kind of balancing act you're looking for. So with this SSTO, with this SSTO, I was going for more of a space shuttle kind of approach. So it had to be something small and lightweight. I also wanted to pack as much much utilities as possible in such a small package because it had to be compact in order to fit inside of the hangar bay that was on the ship. The idea of using an inline cockpit did cross my mind. However, the only benefits that I could see coming from it would be maybe an extra Kerbal. Whereas if I replace this with a cargo bay, now I can put more items in here in a tighter space. I can give it a pilot. I could put some RCS tanks in there. I could put more liquid fuel in there along with more battery power and more reaction wheels. I can then add a re-entry probe core to this just like that and I can even add a means to collect energy so already in a tighter space I have way more going on than what can be achieved in an inline cockpit now the mod that was that little lot of fuck the mod that's really gonna help us out right now is called RCS build aid I downloaded it via CCAN the best part of RCS build aid is that it gives you this little red ball that's right next to your yellow ball which is the center of mass the red ball is the center of mass of your craft when all your fuel is gone. So you see how helpful that is. It's a hell of a lot easier than having to empty all your fuel tanks or refill them in order to figure out where the heck everything is. This will be crucial when we're making the VTOL because we need to know or we need to make our wet mass reside in the same place as our dry mass. So now I'm going to build my engine. I'm going to use these fuel tanks because I can have them attached to the sides. This will be my engine mount and I'll also use these tiny little service bays. Service bays of course are great for putting stuff in them that would normally create a lot of drag. When they're closed, they'll shield the parts that are inside from creating drag. This will be very useful when we put our robotic hinges and stuff inside here. The hinge that we'll be using is the G11. The reason why is because it's very strong and it can hold our engine part fairly well without needing to be locked. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you put this part on the inside. Make sure it pops into the inside like that. That way when the surface bay closes, this doesn't create any drag. I then use an A or what? Blah, 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 blah. I then use an FL a10 adapter before I stick my engine on here. The A10 adapter actually really helps when it can when it comes to controlling drag. I've tried it straight up just without the A10 adapter or yeah and lo and behold I get a whole lot of drag. So if you build your parts like this it'll help with drag. Next I'll take an aerodynamic nose cone and place it on the back. You don't have to if you don't want to however the in-game stock rapier engine creates a crap ton of drag because unfortunately the engine has a green node attached to the back. What this means is that the game sees it as an open part or open-ended part. In order for something to create very little drag, you need to close these parts together or close the end off. This is why things like nose cones don't have any attachment points or nodes because they're meant to start like this and end an assembly in order to make it aerodynamically sound in the game or the game engine. Having an open part with the green node sticking out like that tells the game engine that it's not aerodynamically sound and therefore it adds a crap ton of drag to it. Like I said, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but in order to help with that drag, I'll put an aerodynamic nose cone on the back. I'll then use the move tool to bring it in just so it's barely visible. That way I can help kill the drag and still reap the benefits of having a rapier engine. Now, of course, to tighten up this assembly more, and again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to for your build. I take the rapier engine and I slide it on and just right about yeah, there. Yeah. Now, standing still, these rapier engines do suck up a lot of air. And while I've proven that one shock cone intake can power up to four, almost six rapier engines by itself, when it's standing still doing nothing with very little airflow going into it, it doesn't create enough air to keep these lit while standing still on the runway. So that means that we have to create some intakes that will allow us to have enough air for our rapiers to be able to function while standing still on the 
on the runway. Now, while it doesn't look like it, the small c circular sh sh sec sec what? what? The small circular intake actually just has just enough suck that we need in order to make this work. So I'll grab the rotate tool, bring them in, have them come out a little bit, hold down shift, click on the octagonal strut that it's on, bring them a little closer together, and just bring it on into the service bay. So not only does this make it kind of look cool, especially when the service bay opens up to reveal intakes, but it actually serves a purpose. So now we have to go in here and click on our hinge so I can set that up. Obviously we don't want our hinge to go like this, that would defeat the purpose of VTOL. We want it to actually face down. We'll take the angle limit and set it to zero. So now it just goes from zero degrees to 90 degrees. We want the traverse rate to be a little on the slow side. This will allow the reaction wheels to adjust to the pitch when the thrust changes without flipping the craft the craft completely out of control now this part is pretty simple all you gotta do is what well, you just saw there and boom you're pretty much done with setting up the hinge so while we're at it we're gonna go into action groups click on number one click on the right ear have number one toggle engine number two can toggle the mode or switch mode and we'll make number three toggle our hinge toggle hinge we'll make number four toggle the service bay and there you have it one through four toggles the entire engine assembly now of course you can toggle how, however you want to toggle but for me personally that's how I do it now here comes the fun part matching up your your wet center of mass and your dry center of mass now it can just be as easy as clicking on the part that mounts the engine holding down shift key and just bringing it on in just like that however we have to make sure that the VTOL craft has enough liquid fuel to be able to run its jet engine power for landings and takeoffs as well as ascending into orbit this means that we're gonna need more liquid fuel. There are a variety of ways you can accomplish this. You could extend the engine assembly with a liquid fuel fuselage and do it that way by just dragging this over here or well actually no that wouldn't work would it? Wobbly, uh, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Blah, 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 blah. Obviously, this is not going to work. When it comes to VTOL SSTOs, or SSTOs in general, you want to try to make sure that everything is towards the center of the craft. VTOL SSTOs especially. Their engines and fuel sources need to be towards the center of the craft. So obviously, this is not going to work. Instead, what I like to do is I like to use these littler, littler, smoother, Mark Zero liquid fuel fuselages. They hold less fuel, but they allow you to extend the weight as well as more compact design around the craft. So I'll bring these out so I can see what I'm working with. Put that right in the middle, hold alt click, alt click, alt click, alt click. I'll grab a small nose cone to close that node off, that green attachment point that we were talking about earlier. Close that off to make it more aerodynamic according to the game engine of course. I'll then bring in my engine assembly and then now by holding down shift and using the move tool I can get this pretty much just where I want it. Now remember I encourage you to make your own SSTOs. I encourage you to try new things. This is why I'm not building this one exactly like the one that you saw in the video of my previous previous video that came out last few weeks ago. Now remember, when you're building your SSTO, VTOL SSTO, especially in stock, reaction wheels are your friend. You could put just a larger one on the end, however you want to do it, that's fine. I like to use these little ones because they tend to blend in better. For me personally, not only making an SSTO work is important, but also making an SSTO look good is very, very important. Now I know from experience we're going to need more fuel, so in this prototype, I'm going to put two more liquid fuel fuselages on here, cone them off so they're aerodynamically sound. Might add a little bit more weight, but it's not gonna matter much. I'm gonna bring this in, there we go. Use the move tool and bring it in, You're holding down shift key. Now we have the center of mass directly above the center of empty mass or dry mass, but we're not done yet. Oh no, you're gonna notice that in your build for a VTOL, you're gonna be messing around with this wet mass and dry mass a lot. This is one of the reasons why the RCS build aid is very, very useful. Because now we're gonna mess around with another vector overlay and that is the center of thrust and as you can see it's way off so using your outside fuel tanks as well as your engine assembly you're gonna have to go back and forth until it's just right but we are not done yet 
Now that we've got the center of thrust directly underneath our center of mass of dry and wet mass, of course, we have to make sure that the center of thrust is also towards the center of mass when the engines are angled at a zero degree angle. If both look good, then you're just about done. I say just about done because an air breathing SSTO typically needs wings or some sort of lift mechanism. Wings of course add a little bit of weight so after adding the wings you will need to go back and make sure that center of thrust is equal to the center of mass again. Remember when you put your wings on your SSTO you want to make sure that the center of lift is always behind the center of mass. But don't be fooled because a VTOL SSTO doesn't care about center of lift when it's in VTOL mode. It only cares about center of lift when it's traveling forward. So make sure that your center of mass is in front of your center of lift while not in VTOL mode. When you're in VTOL mode, you don't have to worry about the center of lift's location. The thrust from the VTOL engines is what's keeping you afloat or aloft. Only worry about it when it's not in VTOL mode. Once you got your center of lift figure out or figured out, just double check, make sure your center of thrust is on target above both of your empty weight and full weight while in VTOL mode and not in VTOL mode. I'm gonna tuck in the wings a little bit here, make it look a little bit nicer. Double check thrust center of mass make sure center of lift is still good now I do notice that the dry mass is telling me that it's a little far ahead of the center of lift which is telling me that it's a little nose heavy so if ever this thing had to come back to Kerbin with very little fuel it'd be very nose heavy so I want to try to correct that and in order to correct that I'm just gonna bring the center of lift closer to the front but I make sure that I don't overtake the center of lift or I, sh I make sure that I don't overtake the center of mass so I'm gonna go to grab the back here and pull it forward that's fine it's right on top of each other but that's fine I'm gonna bring this out a little bit there we go maybe bring this down just a pinch now in this design I'm gonna put something right here because it looks like we have enough room now I'm gonna place that Elevon 4 right here bring that in there double check our center of mass and center of thrust again all right so a VTOL of course needs some landing legs landing legs for a VTOL can be a little tricky especially if you have something that's built quite like this one simply because the VTOL engines stick down underneath the belly of the craft quite a ways. So I'm going to put the first gear on here, make sure that it's reaching lower down than the engines are. Seems like it is. So I want to try to match that same level of with the gears. This is one of the reasons why I used these fuel tanks and kind of put them in the back right here. Try to give me uh, this leverage right here for the gear. I'll then take my craft and put it towards the floor of the hangar bay and just look at what touches first. And it looks like the front gear is touching first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a means of measuring. Uh, excuse me, you're in the way. Thank you. So hold down shift and bring this gear ever so slightly up to try to match the other gears because in a VTOL SSTO you don't want to be pitched up or down while on the runway or on a surface you want to be as level as possible so that when you finally take off you don't immediately either go backwards or forwards or sideways but rather up so right now the Kerbal engineer is telling me that I have a TWR of above one which is good also if you're using Kerbal engineer make sure to click on that Atmo button because if it's off that means it's telling you how much Delta V or TWR you have without an atmosphere which is great for space calculations but not so great for SSTOs. Alright so according to this this should take off and fly perfectly or damn near perfectly. Let's put a few more action groups on here. Number five will open up our bay toggle bay doors. Number six will open up our Clampotron shielded docking port toggle shield. I'm going to make number zero the toggle for the re-entry probe core control from here and number nine the toggle for regular flight will be the command pod control from here now right now this craft doesn't have rcs but we'll worry about that later now here is an old a huge tip when you're dealing with robotic parts in ksp or Kerbal Space Program, it's like playing Russian roulette. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And what I mean by that is when you're using mirror symmetry or any other symmetry that duplicates the same part on the same on the same plane, your robotic parts can bug the, the fuck, fuck out. out. In order to keep this from happening, and you can do this, you can test this for yourself. But in order to keep this from happening, take the engine assembly right up to the engine mount 
Do not touch the engine mount or the part that you're using to mount the engine on. Just take the assembly, the rear assembly, take it off. Make sure that your symmetry count is at one. Put this back on, hold alt and click, and then copy it to the other part or the other side of the graph. For some reason, this will now work flawlessly every single time. You don't have to worry about bugs. I don't know if it's because it sees it as just one part or whatever the case may be, but it's it's just the way things are for Kerbal Space Program at this point in time. Now, for those of you who have made it this far into the video, congratulations. Many of you have only watched maybe 50% of this and have gone off to build your own VTOL SSTOs. But for those of you who have stayed to the very end, there's actually a little something that you can add to this craft to make it even better. In your engine assembly, right behind the service bay, there is a node, attachment node that is bare assed naked. Simply put a nose cone on that and you'll have cut a lot of drag from your craft. Now the reason why I didn't show this to you in the very beginning of the video was to see who would watch the end of the video and who wouldn't. I know, I'm so horrible. Space cult. Not only that, but if you take the wings and you tilt them ever so slightly at an angle, it will help with lift. Since this thing only has like, what, one pair of wings? Other than its little control flippers in the end. The flippers. <laughs> also, tilt them up for more dihedral design, increases stability through the atmosphere. And there you go. Now the craft will work just fine without these small enhancements, but with them, you can save some Delta V and have an overall better craft. So do me a favor. If you see someone comment about not adding a nose cone, to the service bay to reduce drag or tilting and dihedraling. <laughs> Is that even a word? The wings. Go ahead and comment underneath their comment. You, you should have watched, watched the whole video. video. Do that for me. Anyway, if you've done everything correctly, this sucker should fly beautifully. In order to fly something like this, once you're in the air, pull forward a little bit to about 20 meters per second, then switch from VTOL to normal mode. Point the nose up while you're doing this. Once you start get going, make sure your nose is pointed to about 10 degrees. Since it's so light and it's got so much power, anything lower than 10 degrees for your flight path will ensure destruction of your craft. Overheat, boom, you know, dead. Once your apoapsis reaches about 44, 45,000 meters, click on your prograde. You could probably go lower than that, maybe about 40,000 or 42,000, but I'll leave that up to you. As soon as your rockets kick in and your apoapsis reaches about 70, 75,000 meters, turn everything off and coast about 10 seconds out from 75,000 meters. And once you get to about 10 seconds, go ahead and do your insertion burn. Now what I like to do is when my jet engines die, my rockets kick in, I normally go to about half power or one third power. I've noticed that I do save a little bit more delta V this way. And my guess is that more delta V is going towards speed rather than height. Because what you really want in an orbit is speed. Height's important, but speed is even more so important. And when you're already at 45, 50,000 meters above Kerbin, the air resistance is so small that it really doesn't make that much difference when it comes to drag on your craft. But anyway, here it is in all of its glory. VTOL SSTO breakdown. If if you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly on the weekends. We also do live streams. Right now we're doing a live stream of career mode on moderate, although I have clicked on a few options that make it even harder, like plasma blackout, g-forces, all that stuff. It's really fun. We also have a membership if you're interested. If you become a member, you get little cool emojis and badges and stuff. Pretty neat. Check it out. But anyway, thank you again for watching this Kerbal Space Program video for SSTO VTOL. Love you all. Please stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.